Hey everybody, Lonnie here. So our application is coming together. This part, uh, part six, we're going to be mocking up our dashboard. This is something that uh, typically happens in a normal application development where you create your mockups um, and then eventually you bring in the real data. But this uh, kind of um, allows you to get going on it, especially if you have a couple different people working on it or, or a small team. Somebody can be doing this uh, mockup part. So I wanna show how I normally go through that process. We'll be building, uh, mocking up a dashboard with some test data just to play around with it and make sure everything looks good before we start bringing in our real data. All right, so I'm gonna uh, flip over to Visual Studio here and um, the first thing that uh, we need to we need to do is we need to um, we need to do something around our summary view, right? We need to get uh, some kind of um, some kind of uh, uh, you know dashboard that's going to you know show that chart and it's going to have those KPI uh, components there. So I'm going to bring in some code that will essentially do that, and we'll step through it here um, just for the sake of time. I really don't. Um, uh, want to type it all in, uh, but it's pretty repetitive, so it's really not that that long. I'm going to go ahead and collapse um, collapse some of this, and uh, we'll step through it here. Okay, so the main the main overall structure here. This is our summary view. Remember, this is going to get loaded in. This HTML uh, content will get loaded in when we when our router calls this, just like it did before. But now we're going to be displaying uh, our, our all our dashboard stuff. So uh, looking at the um, let's go back and look at what the overall application looks like right here. This is uh, we have these four. Uh, cards is what I call them, and they're going to be indicating KPIs. So we have uh, some values here, and then we then we also have our chart, um, which so we're so we're going to set up. Uh, these are going to be four components here, and then we're going to have our fifth component here. So let's go ahead and see how that looks. If you see, we have uh, this uh, div set up with uh, Bootstrap. Um, um, class called row and bootstrap has a way a, a grid system um, based off of rows and columns that will allow as your browser size expands and contracts it it will rearrange the the elements within rows and columns to better to be better represented on different size screens whether it's a phone a tablet or a pc uh, a larger monitor. So that's uh, called responsive design and I definitely don't have time to get into all the responsive design um, stuff um, in this video series but check it out if you're not familiar with it if you're not familiar with it. Um, if you are you're probably understanding a lot of this stuff but you can see that we have rows and then each one of these divs is a col which is a column. And this MD3 and SM6, these, these are different uh, responsive design um, uh, uh, configurations so that we'll, we'll be in a three column or a six column uh, um, layout depending on the size of the screen if we're a small screen or, or a large screen. So, so, um, so each one of these uh, elements, essentially, if it's a if it's a mid mid size screen or larger, it's going to be uh, take up three columns. If it's a small screen, it's going to take up six columns. A single row always has twelve columns. That's how uh, Bootstrap works. So we want everything to add up to twelve. So we're we're essentially saying that hey, when we're on a larger screen, we're going to end up having four, and then when we're on a smaller screen, we're going to be uh, twos. Okay, so we're going to have a four in a row, or we're going to have two rows of two in each row. So within each one of these um, these columns, we're going to see uh, another uh, component here, and this is going to be a panel. This is coming from Bootstrap, so we're going to use uh, panel formatting for this. And um, we have the panel heading, and then we have the body. And within the body, we're going to um, we're going to bring in a graphic. Uh, uh, stats graphic which is that little kind of like bar charty thing and uh, doing some formatting on that and then down um, and then we have the, today's production uh, which is the, the text and then we are bringing in the uh, production uh, the production value here and so um, and then we have our units here and so this is uh, just really some bootstrap stuff and a little bit of angular stuff right here 
And each one of these is just a different, um, a different panel or a different card. And this is yesterday's production, and we have yesterday's production value here. And then we have uh, monthly here. And then this is a mining operation, an asteroid mining operation. So um, we have uh, docked vessels that are showing um, here. And um, so this would be, you know, you would put in KPIs and then you would just end up, you know, populating those in your controller. So we have, we have that. And now, um, now we have a couple of other rows down here. And this first row is really just uh, the header part of our chart. And so we're looking at, um, on the left, we're, we're floating it over to the left. It's going to say production. And then over on the right, we're going to say 24,000 tons. That's going to be the production that's supposed to be the sum of what's shown in the graph. We would, um, we would want to change this to something that would be more dynamic in the future, adding all the values up in the graph. You know, when somebody's looking at the chart and whatever, whatever the, how, as, as, they're, as they're interacting with the chart, we could have that change value. Um, and then down here, uh, this is just uh, some some styling stuff here to make everything work right. Uh, and then down here is kind of where uh, where something interesting is happening. We have this uh, this DX chart. That's actually our charting component that's coming from that the Dev Express uh, library. And then we also have a decorator here, a, uh, a directive, an Angular directive called ng init. And then we have a function that we're assigning to that. So we'll talk about these two in, in a second here. So that's what our view looks like. Um, not really, uh, if, if, we, if we look at the view right now, come back to our, um, to Google and to our browser here, and I'll look at the view and you can see that um, we have that kind of laid out. These are the two, uh, the two um, two rows, and these are the two columns in the smaller display, and then we have that, and then we don't see the chart at all yet because we have not um, actually brought that into the project. When I make this a little larger, you can see that um, it's going to one, and it's interesting that this one's a little bit smaller. I think we need some data in here to get this to be the right size. But anyway, um, we can see that uh, that responsive design, we can see that it's changing, right? And that's what those um, that column, uh, those two sets of column settings were for each one of these card components. So, so that's what it looks like. Let's go ahead and get some mocked up data in here and see if we can get that chart working. So back to our uh, Visual Studio project, I'm going to come over here to the summary controller, and in here we want to uh, we want to get rid of this. And we want to bring in um, we want to bring in uh, more our, our mocked up data, and so the first thing is that we want to populate all those cards. So let's go ahead and bring in that information. So this is just like what we're doing with our little uh, sample um, in the um, before, where we're just putting some stuff on the scope object that are, is, is going to be shared between the view and the controller. And we have today's production, yesterday's production, and we have and so forth. And so if we if we save that, we come over and we take a quick look, we'll see um, those values should appear now. And so sure enough, there you go. We have them. And uh, we're still a little bit off here. I'm not sure what's going on with that guy. But um, anyway, we'll just live with it for now. Okay, so the next part is we want to go ahead and see if we can get this chart to come in and uh, bring this chart in and get this to work. So we have this DX chart, which is a another um, directive from Angular, but this is this is a Angular directive that was brought in when we brought in our charting library. So they've already set this up as a directive. So we need to um, we need to um, bring that into our project, and that's going to be under app.js. And under here, all we really need to do is we just have to go um, bring in um, this this um, library of directives called DX. So this brings in all the DX stuff. So we have that DX chart. That's what's going to allow that to um, be recognized. So now that we have the chart, um, we should be able to uh, we should be able to just fit, uh, configure our chart um, and um, and have it render some data some test data. So I'm going to come back here and the chart 
name is production. That's what we've we've assigned it. So this is going to um, when we come when we come over to our controller here, we want to go ahead and we want to do it. We want to set up some configuration for the chart, and uh, that's going to look uh, pretty simple. Now we want to put that on scope like we have um, the other thing, so that we can so that we can um, so that our chart can actually find it and. If you look here, we have scope production. That's correlating to the name of that chart, uh, the name of our chart production. We're setting this, um, we're passing this into this directive, and it's going to then look to the controller for something on the scope called production. Uh, we have this uh, binding. We're going to bind this uh, bind uh, data source to the chart. It's going to call it, be called production data source, and we'll set that up in a second. And then we're just doing some uh, formatting here. We're formatting, uh, we're setting this up as a bar chart. The timestamp is gonna be the, um, the x-axis, which is the argument field, and then the series, which is gonna be all the data coming in, the values. We're gonna um, set that up as a, as a value, and then, and then we're giving it a name. This is gonna be displayed in the legend. So we're setting up a single series bar chart. And this is all um, Dev Express. Um, chart information and they have just hundreds and hundreds of different ways you can figure these charts. Um, so the last thing we want to do is we want to, well, let's go ahead and just see what this looks like and uh, see if we actually see the chart coming in now. And now you can see we have it, but we have no data. It's, we see the, um, the legend over here, but nothing, nothing is appearing. So let's go ahead and bring in some, some test data. And the test data, I'm just going to, uh, it's going to be really simple. I'll put that right in uh, here. And so we want to make sure that we call this production data source. That's what we're binding it to here. So that's also on the scope. And then we have our value filled and our timestamp filled. And that's where we're setting, we're telling the when we're telling the chart when you get this data, uh, the series, uh, the argument filled, that x-axis is going to be timestamp, and then in the series, the value field is going to be called value. So it's actually looking for these two, and we're just giving it some months and we're giving it some values here. So let's go ahead and save that and try and see if we can see that data rendering in our chart. And sure enough, there you see it, nice animation coming in, but you can see March, April, and May, and we can see the values. And of course, if we come in and we change something to, uh, you know, um, change this to 20, we can come in and we can actually um, refresh that. And now you can see this is this is over at 22. So, so we have our test data. From here, normally what I would do is I set, you know, like I was having the issue with the docked vessels not being, um, not quite formatting right. You know, when I come over, um, there's a certain stage there where it looks funky, like right there. So I you know, didn't want to go ahead and, and, and fix that with my test data as I'm rendering this. And also, it just gives me a way to check to make sure that everything's working great. All right, so that's the uh, end of this part. And the next part, we'll be moving into actually getting our API set up so that we can populate this with live data. And so we're almost there. Hopefully, you can kind of see how these parts are kind of um, how they're all stacking together. And this is really typical for um, a dashboard project that I would be working on in real life. All right, so I'm Lonnie. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.